A couple of millennia ago, the ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus made a grand aphorism about the nature of life, as ancient Greek philosophers were wont to do. But paraphrasing his words, he said that no one ever really crosses the same river twice. Which, when taken at face value, is obviously nonsense, but the underlying message he was getting at was that even when you cross over once and then back again, the water that was once there has now flowed downstream. And more than that, you've also changed. Biologically, your cells are constantly being replaced over time, and we grow not just physically, but also emotionally. Change is oftentimes seen as uncomfortable and something to be avoided, but there's no questioning that adaptation and growth are major elements of the human experience. And none of this happens without change. So grand Greek philosophical musings aside, I do think it's interesting that I've started to identify a pattern when it comes to Calgary's Chinatown, and it's one that's centered around the relationship between a threat to the community followed up by a response and then ultimately adaptation or change in response to the initial threat. And this is something that sort of happened time and time again over the decades and over the past century and a half that Chinatown has been a community here in Calgary. but. The sort of unsettling part for me at the very least is that this sort of cycle doesn't necessarily reset. And what we get at the end of the day is not the same Chinatown that we had when the initial threat happened. So I think that growing up when I think about Chinatown and the fact that it was so much of a sort of physical place where you would go and find boutique shops in places like Dragon City Mall with a very distinct architectural style and feel as well as restaurants that you would go to when family would visit from out of town and you could expect a certain style and, um, and ambiance within the restaurants themselves. All of that is not necessarily going to be in the Chinatown of tomorrow. So what that looks like is a little bit unsettling and that's sort of where that feeling ultimately kind of sits with me as I think about it. It was an amazing time to grow up in Chinatown in the 90s and the early 2000s. As a kid, I remember the smells of the bakeries. I remember um, going to Chinese school, hitting up the candy shops that was in the Chinese Cultural Center at the time. It's now moved to Dragon City Mall. Um, it was just a place where I felt a sense of pride amongst my parents and my extended family as well. Whenever we had people come visit us here in Calgary, they always loved the fact that there was a Chinatown where they could get a familiar home-cooked meal and also speak to people in their native language. Um, for a lot of new immigrants in Calgary, like my parents, English was not their first language and it was not easy for them to learn. And so communication was always a struggle, but here in Chinatown, they could meet people who spoke different dialects, you know, who came from their regions, who were familiar with their cultural background. And so it was really interesting to kind of grow up in this sense where I got to see two sides of my parents. And the older I grew up, when I was a teenager, I went to Dragon City Mall, just like everybody did, and collected little stickers that you could take at photo booths. Um, we bought cool anime toys, and it was just such a memory, like such a unique place to kind of go as a teenager, because there's not a lot of places other than the mall to hit up. And so being able to go, go do that and explore in Calgary's Chinatown was a lasting memory for me. I've seen the neighborhood change and grow, and we've definitely seen lots of development. Um, a lot of the buildings may not necessarily reflect the historic nature that the buildings formerly had. But I think that what we're looking at growing into the future is that more developers and more and the city is understanding why that is important to keep it visually, visually unique and um, to have those Chinese kind of um, architectural elements that although you may not see it in China, that's the big argument, right? Is that, you know, a lot of, in Shanghai and Hong Kong, you really don't see buildings that are green and red and gold like we do here. But for many, you know, Chinatowns had to create that for survival. They had to create these types of architectural elements in order to kind of help them stand out in the cities that they were in. With the first example, I believe, being in San Francisco when there was an earthquake and it kind of destroyed the first Chinatown there. Um, and when they finally decided to rebuild, they did it in a way that would attract people to come patronize the restaurants and like the businesses and they had to do it in kind of a theme park kind of way with the green and the red arches and things like that. Um, although it started kind of in a way to attract tourism, I think 
in modern days all around the world when you go to Chinatown you kind of start to expect this kind of um, architectural element now and it's kind of created a niche in itself like an architectural style in itself and so I know that in the past there were probably um, struggles in terms of trying to figure out what Chinatown should look like does it matter that it's um, like visibly Chinese or is it more about the heart of the businesses that are in there and I think during our tours we kind of say like you know as citizens and as um, visitors to the community we don't really have a huge amount of input into how a developer builds their buildings but what we're hopeful for is through the tours and through historical understanding of why this community exists I hope that developers hearing these stories will say hey you know what I'm going to respect what they've done over the years and I'm going to take that into consideration and I understand why having a visibly unique neighborhood would actually be a benefit and not a burden to my business. So Chinatown as a physical entity is one thing, but when we start to consider the changing demographics, things can get much more complicated uh, much quicker. And that sort of leaves a question in my mind, which is how do we reconcile and commemorate the Chinese Canadian experience in Chinatown, while at the same time making space for newcomers and their experiences in a way that's authentic to both cultures and in a way that sort of celebrates the diversity that's sort of inherent in the neighborhood to begin with? I think um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll maybe highlight three points. Um, I think um, where I feel we're at um, uh, with uh, Calgary Chinatown is we now have a roadmap. We have rebuilt uh, the trust and relationship between the Chinese community, the Chinatown community, and the city of Calgary. Uh, and uh, I think where we need now, because the revitalization of Chinatown is going to take time. And uh, so, you know, we need um, uh, cultural revitalization. We need um, economic revitalization. There's also community work that we need to also um, embark on uh, to bring the different generation together, to bring the different communities together, to bring the different sectors that can contribute to the future development of Chinatown. So there's a lot of work. Um, and um, uh, and so, so uh, from what I have learned from other Chinatown's efforts, because you know Vancouver started you know 15 years ago, Edmonton started you know about five you know five years before we did, so uh, uh, so they they uh, so the 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 um, especially the economic development um, uh, is one of the areas that uh, would require a lot of effort and investment from uh, different levels of government, different sectors. Uh, and the in, in, in ingenuity and, and uh, creativity of the community. Uh, uh, so, but it is going to require a lot of uh, efforts and resources uh, to uh, realize the plans in, in the cultural plan and the area redevelopment plan. Because of that depth and breadth of development and redevelopment, we will also need to engage uh, the broader public uh, in their understanding, their awareness, and their support for the development of Chinatown. And uh, because, um, you know, we've, we've been an integral part of Canadian society for a long time, uh, but I think there's further work that, ne that needs to be done to really bring, uh, you know, the different cultures closer together. So we need the wider public to, have to, to understand the value and the benefit of um, uh, revitalizing Chinatown. Because, you know, what I love about the, the future of Chinatown is it, it will be a place for everyone. It's a place that will benefit everyone. And, but in order for that to happen, we also have to start to, to help people to, to, to be aware of that benefit. Right, so it's it's not there right. It's not out there right now, uh, and um, so I think it will require further work uh, to um, to sort of bring the broader public into this, uh, and uh, to to share the vision for a more vibrant Chinatown and how it could bring people together, uh, and um, uh, how it is a place for everyone, right, to discover, to enjoy. Uh, for generations to connect, for different people to connect, uh, you know. So I think, you know, part of my love for what's happening is it's, it's such a place of um, great potential and promise, 
uh, for you know for uh, for Calgarians, for Albertans, for Canadians, for people from around the the globe who come to visit Calgary, and of course for uh, for Calgary's Chinese community. I think it's easy to lose sight of in light of the fact that Calgary has such a stereotypical identity associated with stampede culture, cowboys, the western frontier, things along those lines, it's sort of like that motif. But when we look at it from more of an external sort of objective standpoint, you'll find that Calgary has pretty deeply rooted multicultural elements that have fed into how the city, you know, came to be. And it wouldn't be the same city if it weren't for the contributions by people who don't look like the sort of quote unquote majority um, ethnic identity that is associated with, you know, Western Canada. Here in, in Chinatown, my uh, grandfather's name is uh, on the uh, ancestral chart of the Lee Association here. If you went to the Lee Association chart, you would see our, uh, their ancestor of uh, Lao Tzu. And under uh, under Lao Tzu's picture, right, all the Lees uh, believe they, they are their descendants of Lao Tzu, the, uh, the the father of Taoism. And underneath uh, the, the the Taoist picture, there are all the uh, uh, major association members from the four counties, Lees from the four counties underneath there. And and my grandfather's name is 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 there. So. Uh, I didn't know that until uh, 2005. I actually contacted the Lees Association for uh, to help another association, and uh, the 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 president of the association says, "What's your name?" And I said, uh, "Your Chinese name." And I said, "Li Gan Man," and he knew exactly who I was. He he says, "I knew your grandfather," and uh, from my Chinese name, you can tell. Uh, if it's the father's side, what generation? And he says, you're from our village. And I was at this meeting and he, and he says, uh, and, and they're having their, their meeting, and he says, would you, would you sign this? And I didn't know what it was. I said, he says, uh, maybe you can help us out with our association with your English. He says, but sign this so you can. So I signed it and he says, give me five dollars. And I says, oh, sure, I gave him five. You are now a member of the Lee Society of our Benevolent Association. <laughs> and the reason was I was from their village. So that, that uh, looking after your own, finding the, the people from your city still exists to this day. Historically, Chinatown was, was an enclave to help newcomers. And Chinatown today is still an enclave for newcomers, and I think that is uh, one of the strengths of Chinatown is welcoming newcomers, helping newcomers have a better life in, uh, in Calgary. Whenever Chinatowns are threatened, it kind of brings the, the community back together to say we have to stand together in order to, sur to survive. And uh, I hope the uh, the, the, the third and fourth wave uh, Chinese immigrants that have come to Canada realize they have to support Calgary's Chinatown because it's part of their heritage and it's part of the pres pres preservation of their own identity. When I think about the fact that change is a constant and will always sort of be affecting cities, especially on the municipal level, Things will be changing in ways that are unexpected and in ways that constantly challenge us to adapt and to overcome uh, in new ways that sort of challenge our current modes of thinking. Then we should consider diversity and multiculturalism as assets as far as being able to offer us perspectives that may not be so obvious or so sort of front of mind. Um, and I think that's sort of something that really stands out to me as far as being able to use these assets as strengths and as an opportunity to address uh, complex social and societal issues today as well as into the future. And perhaps one last story uh, that, um, that, that have over the years have a special place in my heart is uh, I used to run after school program for kids in Chinatown. 
uh, and um, uh, and at that time, the Chinese community service had a, a tiny office in the Chinese Cultural Center, and the Native Friendship Center was right across the street. And uh, and they were running after-school programs for uh, indigenous kids in Chinatown. So uh, so I went across the street and talked to uh, some of the, the staff there, and then we actually jointly uh, run after-school programs in the Native, Native Friendship Center for the kids uh, from their program, as well as from the kids in Chinatown. For me, the future of Chinatown is made up of people from all walks of life, regardless of your ethnic origins and of your cultural backgrounds. So long as you care about cultural diversity in the city, I feel like Calgary's Chinatown has a place for you. And I mean this in, with respect to the idea that we need to preserve and to share the 150 years of Chinese Calgarian history just so that we don't make the same mistakes, especially when it comes to welcoming newcomers to the city, in that we don't repeat some of those processes that um, hopefully we should have learned from by now. But more than that, I think that we're making steps towards Calgary's Chinatown being more of a proactive entity rather than a reactive entity. And this is sort of like predicting what problems might come up, what we've noticed in other Chinatowns across the country and around the world, and making steps so that this community can be more resilient moving forward than it has been in the past. I think what we're really focusing on at I Love YYC Chinatown and even in the Save Chinatown process was we realized that we really need more young people to get involved. We really need the next generation to start learning about the community, to step up and not only help us um, when it comes to the future sustainability of the city, but to just participate in this neighborhood as a whole. I think like many people who live in a city, sometimes you don't go to Chinatown unless a friend is visiting. But without visiting Chinatown and going to the businesses and eating at the restaurants, um, we really don't we miss out on an opportunity to learn about our neighbors and we also miss out on an opportunity to support these businesses that might otherwise close down if we're not around. And so I always find um, with doing our Chinatown tours, a lot of people find out about history that they never knew about. Um, they realize that they've been taking Chinatown for granted, like it's not, there's no promise that it's going to last forever and that they really need to do their part in terms of coming to Chinatown more, reading more about the history and participating more in the civic dialogue when the city's asking for opinions and engagement from um, ordinary citizens to really actually put forth an opinion and let people know that um, they care about Chinatown and they want to see it last. I would love Chinatown to again be reinvigorated with students, you know, with youth, um, with students and even adult lifelong learners. We've always been a neighborhood that really cherished education. We have a ton of cultural classes, we have language classes, we have arts classes as well and martial arts and sports and so to be able to reignite that as a possibility for Calgarians to think, hey, Chinatown actually has a ton of recreation and lifelong learning opportunities. I think that that would just add to the vibrancy of Chinatown beyond just going to the restaurants and checking out the retail shops. Um, I think in five or ten years I would love to see more residential in Chinatown as well. Right now we have quite a good mix of um, affordable seniors housing for all ages and supportive seniors housing but there's not a ton of room for families and we still have a lot of immigrants just like my family settled in Chinatown in the 80s you know we have a lot of immigrant families that settle in Chinatown now but it's always more transient like they don't really stay it's kind of an in-between housing option for them as they move into bigger housing or a place with more bedrooms and so I hope that the developers who decide to you know build on the land parcels that they take into consideration the importance of family-friendly housing options, you know, two-bedroom apartments or maybe some sort of mixed-use housing, um, that would be really great. And, you know, hopefully Chinatown continues to grow instead of shrink. That's my dream for Chinatown. So I come back to the question of, is Chinatown dying? And I would have to say that at the end of the day, my answer to that question is no. And I say that with the caveat of, I can't really think of a time period over the past century and a half of Calgary's Chinatown's existence where it hasn't been in some form of existential distress or threat. So it's not really saying much as far as this is just par for the course as far as I'm concerned. But at the same time, I do think that there are elements today that weren't present in the past, such as the passing of the new cultural plan. And I think that this spells a new relationship with the city on one side and the Calgary Chinatown community on the other, 
Whereas before they were sort of like oil and water and very separate and distinct, I'd say that they're starting to communicate and they're starting to demonstrate a willingness to work together in a way that reflects the needs of both sides. And I think that joint development and that joint direction that the community is heading in is something that is present today that wasn't present in the past. But at the same time, I'm not naive enough, certainly, to think that just because a cultural plan was passed through city council, that everything is well and good. Um, Chinatown has always needed vocal advocates and active involvement, not just from the Chinese community in Calgary, but from the more broad spectrum of people who care about diversity, who just care about having Chinatown in the city, regardless of your ethnic background. I think that having those voices present at the table is more important today than it ever has been. And um, now more than ever is the time to sort of actively put yourself in the conversation to have your voice heard so that we get more diversity around the table when it comes to the future and present development of Calgary's Chinatown. So I'm not quite sure what the future of Chinatown will look like post 2023, but for the foreseeable future, at the very least, you can catch me in Chinatown buying a block of tofu, visiting the Cultural Center Museum, and just spending afternoons hanging around Sinlok Park. I'll be there for the next Korean cafe that opens up, or the next Filipino karaoke joint, and I'll sort of be waving my fist in the air and reminding my friends that that used to be a place to rent boutique DVDs, or a dim sum restaurant that used to be really fantastic. But at the end of the day, Chinatown has always been that place where we can sort of celebrate our individual unique um, heritage, but at the same time contributing to and co-creating these shared harmonious public spaces. I hope to see you there and until the next time, thanks for watching.